You know, from a modern perspective, there's not much to this game. I mean, it's only got three levels, and if you're good, you can beat the first one in a matter of seconds. In fact, it only takes a couple minutes to finish the game. It takes longer to eat a banana than to beat Donkey Kong, to see the ending, to save the girl, and conquer the villain. But that's the thing, there's an ending, and you save a girl and conquer a villain. But this is a game that helped redefine its industry for a lot of reasons. It may only take a few minutes to beat Donkey Kong, but even after a few decades, you never forget Donkey Kong. So it was 1981. Video games were mostly defined by the arcades. They were things you threw quarters into, try to beat your friend's score. Fast forward 30 years, and video games are a little different. Now they're defined by the living room. And it's not so much about high scores anymore. Now it's about the story. It's about vanquishing evil, being a hero. Video games have actually evolved toward movies. As weird as it may seem, given its basic graphics and lack of dialogue, this is that one radical push that started that evolution. It was a carpenter and his girlfriend and a monkey. Donkey Kong was originally released in arcades in 1981, at which point it promptly took over the world and put a Japanese company called Nintendo at the forefront of the growing games industry. And five years later, Nintendo would bring the game that started it all to their fancy, groundbreaking new home video game machine. There had been home consoles before, but nothing like the NES, just as there had been video games before, but nothing like Donkey Kong. And speaking of video games and movies, Donkey Kong's kind of a playful reimagining of the Hollywood classic, King Kong. The lovely lady is kidnapped by a massive gorilla, Donkey Kong, and her boyfriend, the carpenter known simply as Jumpman, has to save her. With Jumpman on his heels, Donkey Kong does what monkeys do, he climbs. He scales this towering construction site, throwing barrels at the carpenter and ascending the steel higher and higher until there's nowhere left to run. We get one final showdown between the hero and the villain before the game does what few before it ever did. It ends, and not with a game over or a high score, but with a reunion, with a conclusion to a classically structured story. Of course, you just play it again after that, but the point is, Donkey Kong took an approach no game ever had. It was actually structured like a movie, as much as a video game. There was a distinct beginning, middle, and end, with music that actually changes as the story progresses. And by level two, Jumpman's closer, and he begins to find her belongings, like a trail of breadcrumbs or purses and parasols. Donkey Kong was the first game in which the story was the driving element of its design. Everything else came afterward and was put together to tell that story and drive the plot. But you know, Donkey Kong also broke ground for its gameplay. It was a 2D platformer at the dawn of the age of 2D platformers. This game set the course for the future of game design, both in terms of its emphasis on story and in terms of its gameplay. But all the masterpieces that came after Donkey Kong, from Mario to Mega Man, were using gameplay that started here. The idea of running and jumping, the idea of power-ups with benefits and drawbacks. I mean, these are ideas that would soon define video games, and to some extent, Extent still do. Now, obviously, this is Donkey Kong as it appears on the Wii U. It's available in the eShop. I'm not going to tell you this is some must have download or anything. Chances are you've bought this game for several different platforms. I mean, there's no real plus to having it on Wii U, except maybe the ability to play on the gamepad. But if for some reason you've never played it, don't even hesitate. I mean, for all the things that are amazing about Donkey Kong, perhaps the most amazing is how well it still plays and how relevant it still feels despite being such a big part of the past. I mean, the 1980s would become a golden age for video games, and it was built by a lot of the greatest games ever made. But beneath what those classics built, beneath that golden age, there's a frame, and it's made of red steel girders.